So when you are, you know, dealing with people who are toxic or you're dealing with toxic behaviors, text messages, emails, um, comments on, on these social medias, right? Like they're all across the board. You can't tell what somebody means just by reading their words. So, you know, I, I've gone over it a few times. I made a post the other day about the 15 cognitive distortions of thinking, of thought. Oftentimes we read way too much into words. We read way too much into the meanings of what people mean. And so that one-on-one -on -one quality time really helps us build healthy communication. It helps us be more vulnerable when we feel a little triggered by a statement or a word. And it allows us to crack ourselves open to be able to say, hey, what do you mean when you say this? Because when you said it, this is how I felt. That's okay to say in a relationship. I just want to make sure that you know that. Now, I wanted to get educational on this um, this podcast episode. And so I wanted to bring out the set, some, some behaviors of what toxic behaviors look like in communication so that we can start identifying not only toxic people, but just behaviors in general that are not okay. So we can start identifying where we need to place better boundaries or speak up for ourselves or just in general, find healthier ways of communicating. I might say some of these and you might be like, wow, I've done that this week. I did that earlier today. I did that the other day. And so I think it's important that we start to understand what a toxic behavior is. So I have a second tile here to bring up on the screen um, for the seven, seven behaviors that are toxic when it comes to healthy communication, okay? So this is really great stuff. We've got number one is constant blaming. A really big piece of a healthy communicator is taking accountability. It's something that's not happening very often. We've all been taught to point fingers, right? And there's that old saying, when you point a finger at somebody, you've got three fingers pointing back at you in the hand that you're pointing with. And I think that's so valuable because even if somebody is to blame for something that's causing an issue, there are lessons to be learned where you could have placed boundaries, things could have been communicated differently, we got to take accountability for our feelings and our emotions and how we are conveying those to other people. So constant blaming. If you have somebody in your life that never takes accountability for what they have going on, let's be honest, okay? That person may never take account accountability for whatever it is that you're struggling with in any kind of moment. And so it's most likely not going to happen, okay? If this person blames everyone for all of their problems, do not expect them to take accountability for whatever it is that you're hurt by and start placing better boundaries with this person so that you are not placing um, yourself into a situation where you're going to have fingers pointed at you for things. Okay, so that's one. Number two, sarcasm and contempt. Sarcasm is such a common language in our culture and society. It's in comedy. It's in every movie. It's in all of our favorite like characters. There's sarcasm everywhere. And the reality of sarcasm is that it kind of feeds into the third one there, passive aggressive behavior. Sarcasm and passive aggressive behavior both are ways that someone is avoiding the main issue or they're not being totally open or totally honest about their feelings. Sarcasm is a way of holding someone else in contempt of their actions without being deep about it. I would say deep. This is the best way I can describe it. If we're not deeply connected, if we are not having a healthy, intimate connection together, sarcasm might be the way that I keep you at a distance because I don't want to be deep with you, okay? So when we have somebody throwing sarcasm at us, 
For those of us who have survived trauma or have anxious attachment styles, it literally throws us into anxiety overload because we don't know whether or not to take them seriously. We don't know what they meant by it. Sarcasm is so hard to identify where um, the, the underlying issue is or what the underlying feelings are. And so honestly, if you want to have healthy communication with somebody who's being sarcastic, call out the sarcasm. Call it out and say, yeah, that was a really sarcastic way of how you feel, but I'm not really certain how you feel. Is there something that I could do to support you? And if it's met with more sarcasm, we're not getting anywhere. This is this person's first language. It is what it is. 